Please welcome Polar Explorer Jade Hammeister. And Anna Bertmar Khan, Senior Technical Advisor, Dubai Cares. Good morning. How exciting to be here with Jade and you people, too. <laughs> Today's Innovation Forum by Women, the session will focus on innovation, action, and change. With perspectives from Australia, Hong Kong, India, the DRC, to right here in the US, we will hear from a group of incredibly accomplished women tackling gender inequality from many different angles. And we begin today's session with our youngest speaker, but not the least inspiring one. Jade Hammeister. Jade, welcome to MIT. I'm so honored to sit on the stage with you. Thank you. Jade, aside from a bunch of other world records, you've become the youngest person ever to complete the polar hat trick. So we want to understand, can you first explain to everyone what is the polar hat trick and what did these three expeditions entail? Uh, so the polar hat trick consists of skiing to the North Pole, which I did when I was 14, um, skiing across Greenland, which I did when I was 15, and skiing all the way to the South Pole, which my team set a new route um, from the coast of Antarctica. Um, and all three trips, we were on cross-country skis, pulling sleds with all of our gear, all of our food that we needed for the entire time, um, sleeping in tents. Yeah, it was, it was hardcore. <laughs> She's from Melbourne, Australia. I'm Swedish, so I grew up on skis. I don't know how you <laughs> did that. It's just amazing. <laughs> amazing. Um, and I wanted to ask you, what are some of the most challenging moments apart from the weight of the sleigh, of your adventure that you can remember and how did you overcome them? I think like all three trips were very different in terms of challenging moments. Um, like all of the landscapes were very different. North Pole, we had just over two weeks of delays because the, um, the sea ice which we needed to land a plane on to actually start the expedition kept breaking up um, because of warm weather and that had like never happened before for that long. There was the chance that the season might be cancelled completely. Um, and then once we got out there we had like a few issues with open water leads which is where the sea ice splits, um, compression zones which is where the sea ice collides so we were constantly like battling the environment. Um, and then Greenland, we had really warm weather, which was kind of unexpected too. So um, when we got caught in blizzards high on the ice cap, it wasn't snow that we were um, fighting, it was rain, which was completely unexpected. And we had to set up tents and stop skiing. Um, and South Pole was like a completely new level. It was 37 days. We had days of minus 50, 40 knot headwinds. Yeah, it was, Goodness. it was hardcore. That's tough, that's yeah. really <laughs> seriously tough stuff. But you had very good thermal underwear. We talked about this before. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> very important. Um, I wanted to know also, when it comes to your personal growth, the conversations in your mind, and what lessons about overcoming these challenges that you would like to share with young women around the world? Uh, well, I definitely had a lot of time with my thoughts in my own head. Um, we were skiing like eight to nine hours a day and because of the conditions, it was like single file. Um, we didn't talk to anyone hardly in um, rest breaks either because you just kind of ate and then kept moving. Um, but I think like starting out as a 13, 14 year old, definitely the, the things that I struggled with was self-doubt, especially mm. like not knowing how to ski, taking on something like this. I don't know, you might call it stupid, but <laughs> um, it, was, it was a challenge. And I think the thing that I took out from that and the sort of message that I think people, especially young women, should 
um, should understand is that it was not about being perfect or focusing on how we appear. It was more about what we can do and being brave. And I think that's, that's what I took out of it. Fantastic. And I'll get back to that towards the end of our conversation because I think that's very, very profound and very powerful. Thank you for being able to articulate that for us. Um, the Earth's polar regions are being damaged by climate change. You write about this in your book. I have read half of it. It's amazing. Please read it. And in that book, you describe how climate change is affecting the environment in which the, you're dragging your very heavy sleigh. Uh, climate change is also being felt in dramatic ways in your home country of Australia, which had its hottest summer ever last year, which is the same in my country of Sweden. It was the hottest summer ever last year, causing coral reefs to bleach in Australia, fish to die in the rivers, and significant losses in the agricultural economy. On the 18th of May, just around the corner, Australia has an election, and climate change is finally high on the political agenda. Australians are paying attention and they want to see change. Do you see yourself as someone who can influence people's resolve to take action to stop climate change? I'm, I'm definitely no expert um, on the issue of climate change, but I feel somewhat a responsibility um, as possibly the only person of my generation to have experience first-hand experience in um, the polar regions. I feel sort of a responsibility to do what I can to share my stories and inspire my generation. Um, I, think, I think my generation will definitely have the, the technology and the passion and the unified movement to make a difference, but I think, um, I think it's up to the generation before us and the political leaders to actually do something about it and make sure we have a chance. Thank you. I think that's a very important message to all of us. There is a tendency right now to want to be inspired by our young people. You, Greta Thunberg from Sweden, who's a climate activist, is another one. And as adults, some of us just get inspired and then we don't do anything. And we can't hand it to you to solve the problems that we created. I just want to make sure we all remember that we're going to listen to you. We're not going to, we can't put the burdens on your shoulders. Um, you previously discussed that we need to shift the focus for young people, for young women, from how they appear. You write beautifully about this in your book, and it's also what your TED talk was about, partly. So shifting the focus from young, for young women from how they appear to the possibilities of what they can do. How do we make that happen? I think like this is sort of what I was talking about before, um, but like I think I learned this sort of message when I was a bit younger and when I sort of took on this challenge not knowing how to ski. Um, I remember like Dad and I spent probably four days in New Zealand a year before the first trip learning how to ski. Um, four days. Four days. <laughs> And I was surrounded by a lot of people who knew what they were doing, um, very experienced skiers, and that definitely like, makes you question yourself and what you're doing there. Um, and I remember too, even on the way to the start of the North Pole expedition, uh, I was in, sitting in a helicopter with a bunch of like, ex-military men who were going to do the same expedition as me, and I was in my pink snowsuit that I'd just peed myself in because I was trying to use a pee funnel. <laughs> Um, I felt pretty ridiculous <laughs> and I definitely was struggling with self-doubt then um, but I just had to remember that like I wasn't there because it was glamorous or because I cared about how I looked. It was, it was about me being brave and doing something because like it was possible and because it was something that I was like exploring in myself. Being brave is an understatement in my opinion, of what you've achieved so far, Jade. Um, the Pete Funnel is a hilarious part of your book. I'm really grateful that you share that. And you're very badass. So I hope you don't continue to get cold 
frostbite on your bum yeah. as you continue your adventures because that sounded really painful. Yeah, it was. <laughs> what a great uh, way to end this conversation with you. I want to thank you for coming all the way, being so badass and inspiring the people in this room and beyond. Um, we look forward to seeing what you're about to do next and um, keep inspiring us and keep holding us, the older generation, accountable. So when you go next to the North Pole, it's not melting anymore. Thank you, Jade. Thank you. Super. <laughs>